Uh, all right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I have a Brave Jayhawk, a.k.a. Uh, Michael Jensen, or Michael Jensen, a.k.a. Brave, Hawk, Brave Jayhawk, on here. And for those of you who don't remember, we did this last year. And just to give you just a real quick summary, we're not going to go through his entire background again like we did last time. But but he's um, I know him back from poker and also from the Survivor Pool um, 2 plus 2 threads. Um, and, and he uh, was always very, uh, he was a good combination of somebody who's being really, really good at this stuff and also willing to kind of share his, you know, his education, his thoughts about it with, with people, you know, and he had a lot of patience for, for, for dumb questions that a lot of people don't have, you know, so, so he reached out to me last year and said, hey, if you want to do some stuff, I'd be more than happy to get in there with you. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to do this on a regular basis this year where he and I both talk about this. And, and as far as what I'm going to be doing for Survivor this year, this is for everybody, all the true DFS people. I'm going to do the same. It's going to be the same as probably last year with a couple of, of, of tweaks. So we're going to do the same, the same once a week thing. Um, but I'm also, and, 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 and uh, Mike, you'll like this. I, I, I threatened to do this for, for five years. And I decided I finally was going to suck it up and do it. Um, and we'll get to this when we talk about it. I finally made my own uh, EV calculator. <laughs> um, oh nice yeah i and that that, pe that people can use and look there's plenty of free ones that you can go to but i just always wanted to just freaking do it you know what i mean um so you'll have people have access to that on the on the site so you and we'll we'll talk more about what that means um and uh and yeah i mean like you're so you're going to be taught by two people who've, who've won a lot <laughs> And know what they're and know what they're doing in this stuff, and I'm not going to spend time going over our various successes. But I, you know, I will start. How how did you end up um how how did you end up uh, uh doing last year? I know that you had kind of a rough start <laughs> to the season. <laughs> but how, how did it go for you, survivor wise? Then we'll get into the get into, into the nuts and bolts. It was a very stress free uh, season. I like uh, it. Eric. Very good. Um, very good. I, I I went ahead and got knocked out of almost everything week one. Beautiful. Um, I took five teams, four of them lost. Um, I, I think we, I, the only saving grace is I did my favorite pick from when we did the original video. I think I, I'm pretty sure I said, I know I said Carolina. Yes. I ended up picking zero Carolina because they ended up, <laughs> they ended up being 10, 12% picked. So I, I went Jacksonville. They were like 1% picked and you know, all my teams lost. I think Denver was the only team I had that won. I picked all the threes and the fours. Um, I, I carried a few through. Um, and I got mad at football around week five and decided I'm going to play the main event instead of watching football. Okay. Um, and I, I, uh, I had the, my last few entries on Buffalo against Jacksonville. I think yep. Buffalo scored yep. six, six yep. points. I didn't watch, I didn't watch in the game. That was the week that, uh, Aaron Rodgers didn't play. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's why I didn't watch it that week because I wanted to watch the Chiefs uh, Packers game and that was it. But I, I made day five of the main event. So uh, that's good. Everything, everything worked out well uh, because I guess, I guess because I got knocked out of Survivor, the main event went well. So yeah, I ended up doing really, really well. We didn't win Cirque, obviously. You would have heard about that. But um, yeah. But uh, one of the big New York pools, I must have sent you an invite. I'll send you to another one. We ended up chopping with like six or seven people for 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 decent six figures, uh, uh, five figures. So that was, so that that was that that was good. Um, uh, but anyway, let's let so let's talk about this. So for those of you that haven't um, haven't done these before with us, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over the we're gonna go over the fundamentals of beating survivor pools or how do you play survivor pools because it's a nasty little game because it seems like such a such an easy thing to do if you, you know, for people, oh, I'll just pick the favorite, the best team every week. And, and then I'll just kind of figure it out when I'm out of teams, you know, and, 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 and but it's, 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 kind of, it's a really, really interesting puzzle that you have to think about. You have to think into the future. You have to combine the thinking of, of the present and the future. And it's kind of a, it's kind of an easy game when you get the fundamentals down and then you can get, make it even harder. So let, let's, 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 again, just to review, right? So, so for those of you who don't know, survivor pools, when you just tip, and their rules could be different for different pools, but basically the idea is you pick one team every week and all you got to do is win. Sounds easy, right? And the only thing is, is you can only use each team once and you have to get through, whole, you know, presumably the whole season. And, you know, and, 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 and that's really the rules. But what you need to think about is, not just who the who the big favorite is. You need to think about other factors. So 
The, the first thing, and what we'll talk about is this. There, there are two main factors in coming up with a good survivor pool pick, okay? And, and the first concept is, is EV, and the second concept is future value. So if you can figure out what a good EV pick is and also you know, how that relates to future value, you're, you're in the right, you're in the right, you're in the right ball game. Now, with respect to EV, there are two components to what makes EV. One is winning percentage. In other words, what chance a team has to win. But secondly, is 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 its popularity because if you have two teams that are, you know, both 70% to win and one of them is being owned by 80% of the field, it makes logical sense that you'd rather take the, the team, maybe it's even lesser likely to win if they're only going to be owned by 3% of the field. So the, the, the calculation of EV is, is a function of not just the winning percentage, but also its popularity. And we're going to show you some, I'm going to show you some tools that can actually calculate that stuff for you. But let, let's start with, I want to start with the first component and that being winning percentage. And it's, it's a, it's, it seems like such an easy thing, right? But people, people get a little cute. So, so Mike, how do you, and I, you might think I'm being, being almost sarcastic, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Right. But, but how, what, what do you use to figure out what a team's winning percentage would be for the purposes of calculating EV? I mean, each week I look at not just the current week spreads, but I look at the next week's point spreads. I mean, I'm looking further out than that, but I'm at least looking at that week and the next week, point spreads, money lines, and then using uh, survivorgrid.com. And I also have a teamrankings.com subscription as well. Um, you know, seeing what they're, you know, using their raw winning percentages for those teams. Well, I'm sharing Survivor Grid right now, for example. What I was kind of getting at is this. So, so what is a team's winning percentage? And I listen, I think about this so much on so many different levels. If you have to, because it's something you do have to figure out, like what winning percentage do you give a team to win the game? And a team does have a certain winning percentage. Like in, in, the, in the ether and in the world and in, 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 in all of the universe, if the Jets are playing the Giants, given everything that could happen, the Jets do have a certain percent chance to beat the Giants. You don't really know exactly what that is, right? But oh, you have to oh, come okay. up. I, 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 see have, what, you, I see what you're asking. So you have to come up with your best guess. And, and, and what a lot of people, I, I, I think, is, is the best thing to do is if you don't know yourself what the best winning percentage is, I think the best thing you do is, 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 is look to the Vegas lines, as you were getting to, right? Because – because the Vegas lines, in theory at least, right, it represents the sum of the knowledge of all of the universe, right, out there. Correct. Because the idea is that if people are going to put money on it, that's that's you know that, that the, I'm going to respect that opinion somewhat. And so what the what the this winning percentage is at the purest level of this money line is one way to think about it is well, you just take kind of the implied average of what the money line that the all the sports folks are willing to offer you. And that kind of, you know, estimates what that team winning percentage is. And, and again, I'm, I'm getting maybe too, too eclectic and too well, philosophical about this. But while, while remember, we, we don't know that that's the actual winning percentage, right? We're just trying to predict what it is. And, and I think that is kind of the best way to start, right? And when you say, you know, look at all, all the point spreads. So what you're kind of getting at is, is if you don't know anything about football, which you really don't need to do, right? If you really want to play Survivor, the, the, the first thing that you should probably do is look at, at something like this, like the winning percentage that Survivor Grid puts out, which is basically just kind of the average of all the money lines, right? That's, that's computed in, in, into, into a winning percentage. And, and, and the question I guess I have for you is, if anybody could do that, is it worth it? Like, do you have try to put an opinion right on top of this. Like if, if, if the money line in, 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 as, as implied by Vegas, and this is like from last season, for example, put it say Buffalo at 88.4%. Do you feel as though you have enough um, special knowledge in football to, to improve upon that? Like, or, or are you willing to just say, you know what? The Vegas line is what it is. That's the best, op the best estimate of what winning percentage is. And I'm just going to go with that. 
Yeah, I mean, a- a- absolutely correct. The The more variables you're considering when making your picks, the harder it is to come to what you're going to, in the end, feel like what the best decision to make is. And this is the first variable that you can just completely throw out and just make it a constant um, using the Vegas sports books um, or, uh, you know, one specific specific site or one that takes in the averages. I, I, I don't handicap any games. Um, I, and I really don't care if they're right or they're wrong. You just, you have to have a starting point. Right. And as long as you have a starting point, then it's just one less thing that you're going to waste time going over. Um, it's in, in the end, it's, cl- it's close enough. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I think, I think, I think I think about this, right. And I think about this in terms of poker too, and I'm just going to end up much longer than that. I had a feeling it's going to go long because I was thinking about this stuff. I'm waiting to, waiting to speak to you and my other partners to talk about this stuff. Cause I think about this literally every year is if you attempt to, to supplant your opinion with that of, of the Vegas total of the Vegas, you know, summary, right. What you're really doing, and this is only, only poker players are really going to get this, right. But I don't care. So when I first learned how to play sit and goes and I did, you know, all kinds of different calculations and stuff, this is before anybody knew what GTO was in poker. Yeah. And, and, and this is before anybody knew what GTO was in poker for MTTs as well. And basically what GTO is in poker with respect to sit and goes is I I think that before I decide how much I'm going to, I'm going to raise, or let's say if I'm going to raise or not, I'll make it easy. I got to think about what you're willing to call with. And I'm going to judge how much I'm going to, what hands I'll play based on what you think you're going to call with. But then, you know what? The defense gets paid too. So, so if, if that guy knows that I'm going to be pushing with this types of, of hands, then he should probably be calling a little bit lighter. And if I then know that he's going, going to be calling a little bit lighter, then I could probably shove a little bit tighter. And then if I, he knows that I'm going to make that adjustment, then he's going to make that adjustment. And we continue to make these adjustments until you come to this equilibrium, right? Where no one right. can improve. And then you're playing GTO, right? And everybody's playing game theory optimal. And the thing about poker, which I talked about a lot, is that if you want to deviate from GTO, if you want to deviate from what is totally optimal, if you're right, you are going to actually do better, right? Than if you play GTO. But the problem Correct. is, is that if you're wrong, you're probably going to lose more than if you're right. You know, so that's why, you know, unless you're really, really good at, at, at being exploitative in poker, I recommend you just play James Game Theory Optimal. And I feel that way about kind of advanced survivor play. You know, like if yeah. I'm, like, I'm not going to tell somebody that, dude, and I, this is this sometimes I get this on the, on the two plus two boards. People like they're like, well, I don't know. I, I think Bob, the Buffalo line at minus seven is just, is kind of bad. I think it should be higher. And people jump down their guys' throat. Like, well, if you feel that, why don't you put all your money on them in, 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 the, in, in the spread? Okay, you just chill a second, okay? A guy can have an opinion, maybe, just maybe, that you have a 50.2% chance to be bet, to be right in that. And and maybe you can't beat, beat you know, the, the, the spread on a regular basis. But if you feel as though you have some kind of edge over the spread, I'm not exactly opposed to, to, to you, to you breaking ties. You know what I mean? With that type of opinion. Um, so again, maybe I get older, I get whatever and, and whatever it is. So you don't have to just accept, in my opinion, the money lines, but again, just, just, just beware. Once you start going down that rabbit hole of, of saying, I don't believe this spread. I don't believe that spread. I'd rather do this. This seven point favorite is so much better than that seven point favorite. If you start doing that, let's just say you better be right. You know what I mean? Because because otherwise you're getting you're, you're you're giving up quite a bit. What, 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 I mean, again, you you actually I was you like you like football more than I do, right? Like so you football you like it enough that you can you can hate it. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. <laughs> like you said I, I, for you to say I like football, I got so frustrated with I didn't watch it. Like that's how much you love football. You know that that you that that it bothers you when you then you don't like football anymore. So I feel as though that somebody like you would be would be more interested in actually having an opinion on this. But but even but when survive what but you're saying again is when it comes to survivor. You're willing to put all that aside, just go with the Vegas line and and, and that and then be done with it. Yeah, it, it it's just so much easier. The, yeah. the in the end, you're you're going to make a pick. And I want to make the process as easy as possible for myself 
to yep. get there without having to consider, I'd rather have two or three variables to consider yep. than five to eight. And the future um, value stuff is so, is, so, is so impossible that you're better off spending your time on that. <laughs> and well, and that, that's where I spend all my yeah. time. And, and the fun part about that, that's yeah. just guessing. Um, yeah. the, the variable I want to uh, talk about that goes along with this is, because I get this all the time, um, not just the threads, but uh, from friends and my partner that I do pools with, I am always looking at what the current spreads are weeks or months from now. I am fully aware that they can change. You know, a quarterback can go down. Um, another quarterback could go down. Um, you, know, you know, one team could be COVIDed out for an enti you know, entire week. You know, like, but in the end, all, you, all I have to work with is what those lines are in week 14 when we're in week eight. Right. And I'm either going to consider those lines or I'm not. And I would rather consider those lines and hope that you know, once we get there, they are they are close to what they were six weeks before. Well, a lot of the times they're not, but that, that that's you, you got to hope for something. If you if you're not planning for it, you might get there and then just have nothing to work with. Well, let's let's wait. We'll get to future value in a second. Yeah. So so let, so let me just I'll give everybody just a little some some caveats that that for those of your beginner players or even those of you that have been playing for a little bit, um, I mostly beginner players. These are these are pitfalls that that you can get into, and this is what you'll see on the threads all the time. Okay, and you have to resist the temptation to do this. Okay, you'll see this. You'll see, but you know, X is six points over that. You know, let's let's put it. Buffalo is six points over the Jets. Indianapolis is six points over Jacksonville. But this would say, but I don't want to play a division rival. Okay, or but I don't want to play. A I'd rather not play a team on the road, okay? Or I'd rather not play a team that's on the reverse turf that they usually play with. Or, you know what? Given these two eight-point favorites, I don't want to play the one that has the backup quarterback, you know? Or, or I don't want to play whatever. And you'll come up with these, these narrative, you know, non-quantitative reasons why you, you want to not do something without remembering that the spread has already – factored all that in okay I, I love those narratives because i ended up just taking those teams because uh the, one, once you hear things like that there's going to be a you know, larger group that thinks the same yeah. way and those so, are the teams i want to take yeah so 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 that that's one thing that you and i spend like five minutes each thing each each of these sessions you know even even with if i do a 15 minute video five minutes can be spent on this just to remind people listen don't worry about it in other words if their ev is x it's because their EV is X. Don't worry about all the stuff that got to their EV being X, unless you really, you know, want to drill down to, into this. And if you're going to really drill down to, into this, it's not going to be because I'd rather I'd rather not play the backup quarterback. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. um, you have to accept the fact, and and I always think about this that that two eighty percent favorites are going to win the same amount percentage of the time. Okay, regardless of how they got that way. And I and I do think that that's really important. So so. Again, we're, we're, we're doing the long way here because, look, if you want to come to the EV, just get the EV. You can just go to, you know, Survivor Grid and they'll list it for you. Okay. And that's what I do most of the time. But it is important to know where this stuff comes from because if you want to, if you feel as though these win percentages are wrong, yeah, I mean, there are tools where you could change, you could tweak around and then the EV will change. But but this is where it comes from is is the the actual Vegas lines. Now, the, the second component of EV is popularity. And as I kind of alluded to before, for those of you who do DFS, you know this, and for those, it should be pretty instinctive, you know, that, that if, and if, if you have 90% of, of, of the people picking a certain team and their chances of winning is the same as, 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 as a team that only 10% of the people are picking, you want to pick with the 10% of the people because you have basically nine to one leverage over a team with the same amount of, you know, opportunity to win as yours is. So with popularity, um, there are several sites that kind of do this for you. And this is what's kind of, what's kind of cool about this is that th there, there are main places that, that house survivor pools. There's office football pool, there's run your pool, there's Yahoo, there's probably others also. And you can actually obtain the uh, ownership percentages um, during the course of the week 
uh, from a lot of different places, but the, the easiest one is actually from Survivor Grid. There's also Survivor Picks. Survivor Picks is pretty cool too because Survivor Picks actually projects ownership out into future weeks, which is uh, pretty freaking cool. Like this is, it doesn't have it in here yet because it doesn't have the spreads, but once the, once the spread, once the future value spreads come out, it'll actually project ownership into the future weeks, which is pretty, wow. pretty, pretty sick, you know? Um, and that's, that's a pretty, pretty good tool. Um, I, I haven't back, I haven't actually tested their logic to see if it's even correct or accurate, but they, they claim to do it, you know? Um, but in any case, um, so what these, they do is they, and, and is, is they come up with popularity here and you could select either the average, uh, the one from run your pool, the one from office pool, office pool, football pool is tech has the most users. And then my run your pool is second. Um, so either of those is going to work. You just want the, the, and now we're going to talk about what pool you're in in a second, but for the purpose of these discussions, where we're talking about your pool that has a lot of people in it. Okay. Um, because listen, the, the, the more, sample sizes you have like the more people picking the more likely it is that it's going to reflect the ownership percentages so if you use either office football pool run your full or average this is going to be a pretty pretty decent number and we probably should have talked about this before we're we're talking for the purpose of discussion here your typical pool with you know you only get one pick a week you know and it starts out with a lot of people it ends up with a little with a little number of people no rebuys or no double eliminations, you know, every, every pool, you know, can be different, but 95% of the, 90% of the pools deal, deal, deal with that. Um, um, any, anything I missed in, in popularity, just the way, just, just the way the numbers are displayed or anything before I, before I put it all together with, with EV. No, I think we're, uh, no, definitely good to continue okay. from there. Right. So, 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 so then, you know, what these sites do is they, they combine win percentage and popularity there's a there's a kind of a, a cool little formula and they calculate ev and they list it for you they just do this all this work for you they put ev right here on the left and they rank all these teams by ev now just to give you a little bit of a uh, kind of a teaser for those of you that are in my uh in my stuff i, sp I spent forever just delaying doing this but on true dfs i'm gonna put up and it's gonna look better than this but at least i did all the logic behind the calculation <laughs> behind all the calculations so I'll be able to, to put my own EV calculator on up here and here for better or worse. If you want to change any of the, um, the win percentages here, you can do that. You want to change the popularity, you could do that. And team rankings and other places do that too. So you know, I figured I would do it also. Um, so all of that gets you to this point where you are picking a good EV play. And again, remember EV is a combination of good winning percentage chances and as a function of popularity and you'll see you know a lot of times teams with the highest win percentage not have the best ev because of popularity so if you could do that if you can just at least come up with a good ev play whether it be yourself or just going to survivor grid really and just looking and ranking in this way you're already probably almost a break-even play in, in in some of the weaker pools almost you're at least not just picking the biggest favor every week right? You're at least paying some attention to ownership, okay? And you're now at this point, probably a break-even player in, in, in most pools and probably still a loser in the tougher pools, but at least you're doing something right in, in, in ranking them by EV instead of just who the freaking biggest favorite is here, you know? Um, right. Because, you know, you have to do this enough times and you have to at least, unless you can grasp the math, to figure out how hard it is if you just pick the biggest favor every week. And this is what people do. My son does this when he was like, I'll just pick the biggest favor. And you know what, what's going to happen when you're out of, out of the top eight teams? Like you, you know, he says, I'll figure it out. You know, I'll figure it out there. You know how hard it is. To, it's hard enough to get eight favorites in a row that are eight point, 10 point favorites to win. Try doing that with eight, eight pickups. It's like impossible. Right. Um, so, so at least if you're doing this, you're, you're at least picking high EV teams. Now the next thing, and this is this is by far the, the the most fun part of all of this, is the concept of future value, right? And what future value basically is is that you want to pick teams now that you are not going to want to pick in the future. Because remember, what we're trying to do 
is get all the way to the end. It does us really no good if, you, if we're, we're good through five weeks, right? We want to get all the way to the end. So you have to be planning out a plan to get all the way to the end, whether it be actually planning that out in advance, which my partner does every single year, okay? Um, or at the very least, when you're looking at teams, say, listen, even though this team might be have a great EV this week, is there a time that I'm going to wish that I still had them available, like in the future, you know? And, and on the other hand, if there is a team right now that maybe isn't the, the, the most likely winner, or maybe it doesn't even have the, the, the highest EV, but they are a team that if I'm looking ahead at their schedule, you know, there's just no place that I'm going to use them in the future. Remember, think of it like a jigsaw puzzle, but you got to pick, probably 18 winners. You know what I mean? So you got to use like 18 to 20 out of the 30 teams. So, so you got to figure out where all these things kind of go together, you know, and, and if you can ever come up with a team that let's, let's just say that you have the second worst team in the league that happens to be playing the worst team in the league. And they happen to be like a five point favorite this week. And you know, they're going to be a huge underdog every other week. That's the perfect example of a team that has no quote unquote future value. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for teams like now that you're not going to use in the future. And you're looking to save teams now, right. And not play them if you're going to want to use them in the future. Now. So, so, so how, how do you, how do you know, like, how do you know where they're going to use in the future? And this is what Mike was kind of getting at. I'm going to let him now go off, go off a little bit more on, on how do you, how do you know, what when you're going to use a team in the future i want to start off with an example i think i might have used it last year but i think a good place to start with anything is to come up with an example that is going to have great acceptance by whoever is listening to the example i was in a pool sometime in the last six eight years we were deep in the season and i think it was seattle they had uh, i think it was like week 14 week 15 there's like 30 people left. This thing's going the distance. Um, not that that matters in this exact instance. And I think one or two people had Seattle left. And Seattle was a like 10 point favorite in week 14. And they were like a 14 point favorite in week 15. And I looked at the picks that this person had and I already knew what was going to happen. I, 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 I assumed that they were going to make the mistake to take Seattle in 14, even though the pool never end on this particular week, and they were going to lose four points in point spread across the two weeks. Um, they had the option to take a seven-point um, favorite instead of a 10 in 14. And then they would they could take the 14 point favorite in week 15 and said they had to drop down to a seven. And they were with a bunch of other people on that team. And I, I, uh, I so basically what they did was they were going to take Seattle in one of these two weeks regardless. But their net point spread was four points less combining the point spread th these teams were favored for. And that's just, and, that, and they jumped on a team that everybody else was picking. And that was a big mistake. And all they had to do was look one week ahead to see that they probably should not do that. Um, so on the, on the very basic level, that's why you have to, quote, look ahead. Because all this person had to do was take a slightly less favored team in 14, and they would gain four points of point spread just the very next week by saving that team for one week. Um, so I think, is that a good place to start for why? Yeah, I mean, you value mean that was even level. a little more advanced than I was going to get, you know, I was going to get there a little bit later. I mean, I just, just as a, it's just a perfect, ex as, as, as just good examples. I mean, you just, you, you look at some of these kind of mediocre teams that playing bad teams and teams like that are just going to have very, very few opportunities to play, you know? Well, and the, uh, and the problem was in week 15, they took the mediocre team versus the bad team that, you know, I'm just guessing that half the people took. So they ended up being on a team where like half the pool had that team. 
Yeah. But they should have been the only one on Seattle. Uh, I mean, all it, it, they would they would have gained not just in 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 uh, actual winning percentage across the two. If you consider the two weeks a slate on its own, they would have increased their overall winning percentage because it didn't matter about getting to the next week. You had to get through the two week slate. The thing was never ending in week fourteen. It's impossible. There's too many people left. Um, it would have required like an, an eight or nine team parlay to hit. Um, you had to make it through the two weeks. They sacrificed not just win percentage to get through, but also a lot of EV because they ended up jumping on a team that half the people had in, in the in the latter week. Now, um, now, now, when 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 you look at Survivor Grid or Survivor Picks or whatever it is, whatever you get to them, they're gonna, they're going to do this for you. Like right now, it's not go. Actually, you could. I'm going to go back to like a previous week. Okay, so I'm looking yeah. at Survivor Grid for say week eight. Okay. What they'll do for you is they will, again, they will rank EV over here. And then they will actually assign a future value to, to these teams. And again, if you want to just be pedestrian, you'll look at this and you'll say, okay, the teams with the most stars have the most future value. So we probably try to want to avoid those. So th this is, this is it's a very, very basic level, right? This is, there's a lot of flaws with just assigning future value in this way, you know, um, just to say, okay, there are five, you know, Five stars, I guess that means there are five really good spots that you're going to use a team. And it's better than nothing, right? You'd rather have a team where you only are going to be able to use them once or twice, right? So once again, this is kind of a decent start. But remember, don't don't forget, you can only play a team once, right? So if you don't want to like uh, overdo it. You don't want to say like one team's got, a, got five great games they can play, so I'll save them. Another team only has three great games, so I, I, I you know, I want to use them. It's not exactly that easy, but what you're getting at is kind of like pretty, pretty, actually pretty advanced future value stuff. Like the most basic thing is, listen, pick a team. Like I'm looking at this one, Cincinnati is playing at the Jets. Okay. And this, this is actually a really good example because you have the Cincinnati from an EV perspective in this particular week was the sixth best EV team. Okay. Yet they had almost no future value. Listen, we didn't know they were going to go to the Super Bowl, right? At this point, right? yeah. Um, so, so they had no future value. So, what, what it provided was was one of those great, great problems, which which I love in in in, in gambling, sports, and in life, is what's more important. You know what I mean? Like, do you want to take the team with the highest EV, or do you want to take the team with the lowest future value? And and the best is, you know, every answer is always going to be the same. Like in poker, like, well, it depends, you know, for sure. But but at some point, you're going to have to make that, you know, weigh those weigh those pluses and weigh those minuses and and come up with the answer, you know? And that's kind, well, of, what makes, yeah. that kind of what makes it fun. I'll, I'll give you one. This is, this, is, this is my opinion, at least, is that, is that first I'd of like all... Give, I'd like to give one more example. Uh, if, if you can go to uh, 2019 week two, please. Okay. And then sort by uh, sort by EV. Can you sort by EV? It, it's already done. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love this week. Um, this was a great week. I, I mean, I still remember it offhand. Um, this is an, a really good example of not just necessarily sorting by the EV column. Um, my partner and I took Cleveland this, in this particular week. Um, it was a Thursday night game. I don't know if that came into play, why they were so lowly picked. Um, but you, you look at I, – I, I like using sites like Survivor Grid because it's, it's, it's color-based. You can you – know, the more dark green you see by a team, the more valuable they are. I mean, New England, you know, there's just no way we're going to be taking them this early in the season when, you know, going forward they, they have these, all these great spots. I mean, even the next week they were a 23-point favorite, looks like. Um, you know, Baltimore, you know, the, the, the same case, eh, they didn't have that many great spots, but look at the pick percentage there. I mean, Cleveland, this was their, but eh, the third tied for third best game, the rest of the season as the, as the spreads are right now. And again, I always assume they're not going to change. Um, I know they're going to, but I just try to take that variable out because what am I going to decide? Oh, this team's, you know, players are going to get injured and these teams aren't, this team's going to try, this team's not. That my, my starting point is what these lines are. Um, I wasn't going to take Kansas City in this particular week, too many spots later in the season. Um, Houston, really good pick. I mean, it was their best game the rest of the season or tied for best. 
But look at what that pick percentage is. It was 16% compared to 4% for Cleveland. Um, we hammered Cleveland on this week, and I'm, they won. Um, I, it's just a good example of you got to make it – well, this particular year, you made it 17 – you had to make it 17 weeks. you got to take 17 teams. You, you're going to have to pick some average teams in there. And you're, you're either going to find spots like this where they're lowly picked, maybe – EV wise, it was a negative EV pick, but I guess this in this particular week, only two teams were plus EV anyway um, for raw value. Or you're going to have to jump on mediocre team versus bad team that everybody is going to take when it gets to that week. Uh, an example this year is the Raiders. The Raiders have, for current spreads, they only have one game in which they're favored by more than six points. I'm probably not going to take the Raiders this year unless things change up because why am I going to take them when they're playing Texans minus 10? You know, they might be 30 plus percent pick that, uh, that, that week. Um, so you got, you, you have to, if you're not, so if I'm not going to do that, I have to look for weeks like this where I'm sacrificing EV, but to save in this case, new England, Baltimore, Kansas city for later weeks, the stronger teams. So let me, let me, I was, we didn't discuss this beforehand. I didn't know you were going to this, this particular year to give me an example, but, and then when you brought this up, cause I remember this too. And, 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 and here's another really, this is, I think just as good of, of a reason. And I think this is really, really important. This is pretty advanced stuff actually that we're getting into right now, but let, let me tell you why, why Cleveland was an elite play this week. Right. And, and the reason why is this, is that what people are going to do, right, is this. They're going to look at Cleveland and they're going to go to look at week 12, right? So week 12, yeah. Cleveland was shit slated to be an 11 point favorite over Miami. Okay. And so what, what is going to happen, all right, especially when you knew Cleveland's going to be 4% on here is that they, everybody's going to hold them until week 12. Okay. So some people would look and say, well, why would I want to play Cleveland here when I can wait until here and play them as, you know, as, the, as the top favorite on the slate? The reason why you don't, you don't want to think that way is because you project out to week 12, Cleveland was going to be 80% owned in this spot, okay, in week 12. We knew that eight weeks before that. So while it might look as though Cleveland had okay future value here, the reality is they had none because you were never going to pick them anyway in week 12. You know what I mean? Correct. It, yeah, I did not remember that, but that's why I know I, we loved them because we do do that. We look ahead and yeah, as things are, we would never take them in 12 or 14 because they are tied for the biggest favorite and the biggest favorite in those two weeks respectively meaning their best play the rest of the year is right now, and the projection is under five. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, def that, that was definitely the reason that we, we slam dunked them. Um, let, and, nothing, let, let, no, yeah. and, and none of the rest matters. It, it doesn't matter that they're on, on a short week. It doesn't matter that they're on the road. It doesn't matter that, you know, Baker sucks. Um, none, of those, none of those variables matter. It, it, I play in pools where I play under the assumption that they're going to go the distance. And if it gets to the point where that's not the case, I will adjust. But I play under the assumption that my pools are going to go the entire length of the season and I make my decisions accordingly until I'm forced to think otherwise. I'm going to have to take 17 teams, different teams in, in a traditional pool. I have to dip to these types of teams. Do I want to take them when everyone's when they're going to be 25 plus percent owned or do I want to take them when they're less than 5 percent owned, but not as favorited? Well, I'm, I'm going to take the latter every every time. So, hope, so, hope it works out. so one game changer, I think, uh, this year is that one thing that happened between this year and last year, I guess, is that is that sports betting became legal in a lot of places. Right. And and, and what that means is that, I mean, I have DraftKings up here and I have the spreads for every game, <laughs> the whole season. I yeah. mean, they're putting spreads up for the whole freaking season. So, 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 so you're going to be able to fill in those, those, those future value pieces, you know, pretty efficiently 
You know what I mean? Like if they're look, 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 if they're accepting money, lot money for real at these prices right now. I mean, I'm not saying these are a hundred percent accurate because again, we're back to the whole idea is all it's doing is reflecting what they think people are going to bet on, I guess. But, but, but you can, you can, you can do some work figuring out what's, what's, what, what's going on here. Um, but let, let, let me, let me give you everybody one bit of advice. If you come to this type of, of, of decision, which is one that shows up every year, every, every week is whether you want to play the high EV team or the team of the future value. I will say this a couple of things. Number one is that the, the, this might contradict something that Mike that Mike said, but maybe maybe not. I do feel as though that future value, the further out it gets, is less is less reliable. Okay, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. And if you're going to make a future value decision in week three, specifically because you want to hold the team till seventeen, for example. Just, just, just like I said, just make sure you're right. You know, like don't don't give up that much EV to do that, okay? Um, because again, the further out in the future anything is, the more variance it has. So the more in the future you're you're projecting your future value, the the fishier that projection could be. Um, yes, I'd rather I'd rather project it than than not. But 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 you know the the the, the it, me EV thing. I promise you that's pretty damn close right to accurate where the 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 future value all out in the future is rough um the other thing i would say and we i knew we wouldn't talk about this but but if, if you're in a pool that requires multiple picks or has any kind of funny let's just, i wasn't going to talk about this particular pool but but if you're in a pool that's particular funny business let's put it that way like out in the future then future value means a lot more you know um to, as, as far as as saving it like if you know you're going to have to pick a team in a certain week or you have to pick double picks in certain weeks or, or triple picks in certain weeks later, then that tips the scales to, to not saying screw EV, but, but really, really mapping, you know, and, re and really planning stuff out for the, uh, for, for the future. I mean, do you agree with that? So, Anything, uh, I, I do. And so, something for some, for something for people to consider, I like exaggerated examples just to get people yeah. on board with the idea of it. Let's say you're in a pool with 1 million people. Um, the thing's going to the end. I mean, it, it just is. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's too many people to start. And now let's say that it has, uh, you know, double picks in weeks uh, 15, 15, 16, 17. Okay, well, there's a, it's still going to the end right. with a million people. So at, at a certain point, no one, no pool has a million people, but at, at a certain point you need to consider playing to the distances in these, and then just hoping things fall in your favor by, in this example, hoping that saving the bills or the chiefs for the weeks 15, uh, 15, 16, 17 is the right play. And it works out, you know, that they're playing, you know, those, those, those sought after games they have slated at the end of the season they still need to win them and they're healthy and uh, you get to pick them as a big favorite where a lot of people already use them. Uh, it might not work out that way, but if you get there and that happens, you will have a lot of separation and the pot odds that you gave up to get there will, will be, will be there. Two, two other concepts um, since you brought up week 17, first of all, and this should come up, uh, well, should be instinctive, whatever, but as you get later on in your pools, and and the the field size starts to whittle away, um, depending on what type of pool you're in. Like if you get to say 15, 20 people left in your pool, um, at this point, a couple of things are true. Number one is that the popularity percentages on Survivor Grid are going to be irrelevant to you. You know, um, it's what's going to be really important at that point when you get into what they call what I call Survivor's endgame strategy, is you're going to get to a point eventually where you're going to be able to see and project every pick of every person left. Okay. And, and, and whether that depending on your, on your, on your, on your, how much patience you have for it, and whether it be when there's 10 people left, 15 people left, again, my partner will do it when there's 50 people. Left. Okay. Whatever. Um, and we'll go through each person and, 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 and say, this is who they're probably going to be picking this week, given who they have left. Right. Once you do that, then that's when you can use 
the kind of like a customizable EV tool, you know, where you could put in your own percentages, you know, because it, when you're down to 10 people, if you know two people are taking one team as opposed to three, that knowledge in and of itself, that whether that third person is going to take a team will, might completely change who you end up taking. You know, so th- that's when you really do have to be right because you're just giving them way too much EV to not be right as far as that goes. Um, but but so that that's the one thing about that Indian share. The other thing is is and this is a weird thing. Week 17 in the NFL in general. Week so, 18 now. That's what I meant. Yeah, week 18 yeah. is is its own it's its own mess. Okay, because when you think of future value, remember. You know, if, if you're saving teams and let's say you have like a team that they're, they're going to be a top team and you could save them all the way to week 18, there's always that possibility that your team is so good that they end up just not playing anybody in week 18, that they, that they rest everybody and everything that you've done, it just is, goes to shit. You know, there, there um, was a, there was a really funny example in Circa last year. I was out week one, but I, I followed it through. It got down to week 17, and one person had the Chiefs left. Yeah. And it was – I mean, I don't know how they made this mistake. They did not take the Chiefs in week 17, which yeah. made no sense. Yeah. And it was ironic because if the Chiefs – Well, well. The, well only way the, Chief, the only way the Chiefs were going to be were gonna be playing their stars in week 18 is, is if they, uh, is if they uh, lost – um, so they were better off just hoping that they won and take them in 17. Um, yeah, but, because but, if they won, they would have got through anyway. With them. But well, I'm going to get into something you missed as far as that analysis goes. I'll tell you in a second. But but uh, but the um, the other thing though is that also if you're wor- if, if you're in a pool where, you, where you're really struggling and you're and, and you really need to get through whatever it is, I will say that don't worry too much about having a perfect plan for 17 because stuff just does stuff oh, yeah. opens up stuff opens up in 17 that you didn't think about, you know, like, like early in the season, who'd have thought that like you end up like, like you get these, these teams and you know, they're going to start like, like third string guys in the last week. And you just don't know exactly who it's going to be yet, but there's like always some random team, like some Philly over or some Washington over the giants, something like that. Some stupid game that you didn't project early in the season. So that does, stuff does open up. But, but, but the reason why in Circa the guy didn't pick in 17 is because you got a million dollar bonus if you waited till week 18 to play Kansas city or Tampa, um, but he wasn't going to, but he wasn't going to pick them, but he wasn't going to pick them in, in, in 18. He needed them to lose in 17. And that was, and, and the chance of that happening, he, I'm pretty sure he gave up, you know, quite a few points yeah. um, to, to get to 18. Yeah. But I mean, he, I mean, they were over 10 point favorites in, in week 17. Yeah. Um, so well, I guess what happens is you get so bogged down with saving them for that big that bonus at the end that you got then you get yeah. stubborn <laughs> and, and uh, yeah I mean he he's they, you know, they every every everybody everybody tried to outsmart themselves in week seventeen but they all survived anyway those, those, those yeah last, back back to back weeks. years they did yeah those last two weeks um, okay so do you want to give me um again give give me an example of what you're looking at maybe even for week one or. One particular spot because I'm not like I I'm, well, listen. I, I should show you. I should show you my text. Like my my friend has literally mapped out the whole freaking season already. Like he's got like got like we're gonna have twelve. We've got six entries. This is who we're picking in this. This is who we're picking this. And I like it. He, he, him, him and yeah, I get I along really well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know you guys get along. But you know what? I, he was gonna be on here, but then it would take like eleven hours. You know, because yeah. because that and, and he has, when, when I say well, you have the grid, you know, you have these grid. He like literally writes it all on a yellow legal pad. And he has like a like let me show takes a screenshot of the yellow legal pad. He sends it to me, and, I'm, and it's in his handwriting. You know, I'm like, God, oh my god! Oh my god! Well, that, that's a that's a good opening for what I wanted to start with. I, I was a terrible student um, uh, in high school and college. I but one thing I do remember our teachers teach telling us was the importance of like rewriting your notes, right? And that that's how you retain the information. Of course, I never did that. Right. Um, but I do do that for, for survivor. The reason I reached out to you a few weeks ago is yeah. I, I like to do survivor pool for about one week after the schedule comes out. And then I put it away until, okay. um, m- mid August. And I make my, I've been making my own spreadsheet for 10 years. I find a website with all nice. the odds and I manually, I, I prefer it. to type, I prefer to type them in I love to copy it. and pasting. Cause when you type them in, 
you start seeing things that will totally you know, stick it. You know, stick in the back of your head, and then I do conditional formatting to color code certain uh, spread I, ranges. I, I totally love it, and 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 unfortunately, again, I'm not not to interrupt with another poker story, okay? Because of this, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I did this this immediate EV thing on my own is, is I wanted to just just see you know where where all this number what what, what happens to all these numbers whatever, so so I did um, what you might call it what uh, before anybody knew anything about reshoving and ranges and things like that I created a tool for Poker X Factor where I said okay given this this is what you're supposed to shove with given this you're supposed to shove with and the way I calculated was literally. I was on the way from, from New York to Florida with my kids and I borrowed a red, literally a red crayon from my little, my little <laughs> boy. And on like pieces of like col colored paper on the back, I would do the algebra, like in uh, literally the piece of paper and, and made sure it all worked. And eventually it became a spreadsheet. It became a tool, whatever it is. And what I would even tell people is, is, is when, when I, I would say, listen, before you start committing all these charts to memory, I want you guys to do two or three of these calculations totally manually, even if it was with a spreadsheet, you know what I mean? Just the sake, just for the sake of seeing where these numbers happen and where they come from, it may, yeah. may make you appreciate a little more. And for with you, what you're doing here, I totally get it. Like max respect, like, because it's one thing to just wait and see it, but, but to actually plot it on the actual act of typing it in does have some retentive value. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and so, 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 so what, all right, so let's, let's get to it. So what, what do you, what do you got this season? Well, and then one more thing to add, I did a different thing this year where I took, I did the spreads for each team individually. Nice. Um, and I, I, on a, on a spreadsheet in the first, each row has five teams, last row has two. And I ordered it from over, uh, over under totals from top to bottom. It's, it's really good to get a visual on how, what teams you're going to have to end up using at some point to get through the season. And right. for, for Circa, you got to, we got to take 20 teams. Um, two, three, you basically have to take, you know, if you're to use the top 20 teams, you got to take like the Raiders and the Patriots at some point. It's just good to see a visual of, okay, I have to, you know, take these types of teams at some point, And then I like to look at each individual team, like, okay, where, where are the best spots going to be for, uh, you know, for these teams? So they only have so many, you know, good plays throughout the season. Where are the best uh, spots to use them. Uh, so, so going to week one, I've seen some things stick us uh, uh, stick out like they did to me last year for what I'm what I'm personally look for. You and I went completely opposite. Who, who did you go last? Who did you go last year? I did have Carolina. Did you do Car did, did you do Carolina? Yeah, I had a lot so of I, I, Yeah, I wanted to slam them, but I, I just just for the way I play, I, I I just couldn't do that, and then I I got max punished for it. Um, but the teams that I used were pretty good. They were terrible teams. Denver, Jacksonville, uh, what other trash did I pick? Minnesota. Um, this year I'm seeing something pretty similar. I, I was going to predict earlier what, what the highest picked team was, but then you showed me this, this website. And, well, I'm going to tell you, obviously, what you think I am. I, I did think it was going to be Tennessee. I thought they would be the highest picked team in week one. And I can't, um, I don't know if this is accurate. I give this, I'm just telling well, you this is what they're saying. I, I, I mean, like, I, I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm lining up with them. And, and, and the reason for that is, you know, some of these teams. So looking at specifically week one, I like to go through it and then just start eliminating teams I would never take. And, you know, obviously we're not going to, you know, we're not taking any underdogs in week one. So throw all that out. Um, you look at a team like, I think last year, I was never going to take by like Kansas City. They were, I think they were like six point favorite, but they had like 10 games last year where they were like an eight point favorite or more. So I'm never going to take them. Same thing with Buffalo last year um, in, in week one. Um, there's, I like how there's not a lot of really big favorites uh, because I'm going to really go for it. And, you know, I, it's an exhausting season. Let's take a look at the spreads here. So, so, Thursday game, Buffalo. See, that's the thing. Like they're they're predicting eight percent of the people are going to take the Buffalo Rams because there's no chance anybody's playing that game. Um, no. So so you have you get the Bengals oh, at six and a half. You have the Colts at seven and a half, and then you have the Bears, the, the Niners at six and a half. You have the Tennessee at six and a half. 
Um, and and the, boy, this is, this is rough right off the bat, huh? You got. You got I mean, it's exciting. I I, yeah. I like opening weeks like this. Um, there's going to be a lot of diversity, though. There's not going to be a. Okay. No team's going to be picked 20, 25%. There's just too many no. options uh, 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 outside of Indianapolis. Uh, Indianapolis will be, I actually think, I thought the, I really thought Tennessee would be the highest picked team after Indianapolis. I should say, I think Indianapolis would be the high, um, highest picked team because everyone's just going to think Houston's trash, which is probably the case. But um, Indianapolis has a lot of good plays later in the season. Um but, uh, you know, my personal ones, and I'll, and I'll explain why I like them rather than saying why I don't like particular teams. My favorite ones are New Orleans, Philadelphia, and Washington. Um, and the main reason why is I think I, 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 looking at each team individually for what they have this season, I think it's their best player tied for their best play all season for each of them um, with a couple exceptions. Okay, so – for Washington, it's their second best play all year with their other one um, hosting Atlanta. And, you know, if you look at week 12, I'm, I'm sure, you know, that's going to be one of the most popular picks. So going to where we were talking about earlier, Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, do I really want to save Washington for week 12 when they're going to be a higher pick team? Or could I just take them here and they'll be a few percent pick? So I'm definitely going to be taking Washington, uh, Philadelphia. Let's go team by team. I assume it's going to be the same for all these. Um, it's their – they've got uh, – I, I can't remember what side I use, but they're a, they are a six-point favorite, five-point favorite, five-and-a-half, three-and-a-half, and three. So this is like their third, fourth best game. But one of those is week 18. And, and again, that like you, like you alluded to earlier, you just can't – you just can't look that far out the last week because if, if the team's not playing for anything, the spread will move 10 points in the other direction. Um, they're also on the road, which I like because there'll be a big group that won't want to, you know, pick a road team. Um, so I, I, def, I like Philadelphia for the same reason. It's their second or third best game all year, and they're on the road, which will uh, deter people from taking them. And the last one is New Orleans. Um, it's their not, – not including week 18. It's their tie for their second best game. And same thing, their best game is hosting Atlanta. And – you know, if Atlanta turns out to be as bad as what the bookmakers have them at this year, which they have them as like yeah. the second or third worst team, that's just a team I'm not going to – I'm, I'm not going to be wanting team teams that beat that team, especially mediocre ones. Yeah, but what, the, just, but, but, but what the hell? The Saints are a division rival on the road. You don't want to do that. I know. I know. Um, so that's uh, – those are the three that I like. And if it doesn't work out, man, I was pretty relaxed last season, just uh, enjoying the games rather than <laughs> doing all the way. It was nice, you know, kind of have a season. Dude, you, have no, you have no idea. I was, I, I, I became more in tune with the Detroit lions last year than I ever would have imagined. Okay. Every week I was either, I was either rooting against them or rooting for them literally every single week. Oh my god! Well, they had, they 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 lost two games. What like what, the the Vikings game? I, I still had an entry left on that. That's like a seventy yard field goal. I had that field. one. I, I I well, I had a well, I was rooting against them in that one, and then I I I needed um I needed um Justin Tucker with a sixty million yard field goal to. I had <laughs> I had I had that one too, and then I just ended up losing it on uh, the Buffalo. Versus they, they got they got me they got me eventually. By the way, they they when I had Arizona against Detroit later in the season, they they got me they got me. I think I'd like to last thing I'd like to say, unless you want to have more discussion, is a, a team that I just really don't like. There's not as many obvious as ones as last year, like okay. the Chiefs and you know the, the Chiefs and Bills last year were just obviously very bad picks for week one. They they'd, you know, eight, nine, 10 games. Because, because they were so good. You know what I mean? I hope people understand yeah. this, right? Okay. Um, they, they had way too many spots in the, you know, all stages of the season that, that you, you, you can take them. Uh, this year, there's really not a lot that sticks out in week one specifically other than San Francisco to me. Um, you know, they've got, you know, four or five, you know, just as good or slightly better plays available. So why, you know, why take them there when you're going to have, you know, five more options where some of these other ones, there's like less options available later. You who's gotta gonna take be, who's going who's, who's to be the crappy team that everybody just, just attacks every week. Like is, uh, like, it's going to, I think, I really think it's going to be Atlanta, which is why I really want to take the, the, the road 
I, I, that's why I want to take New Orleans. That's why I'm taking New Orleans at Atlanta because I'm not. I'm just not going to take them if if the spreads hold. But that's like week 18. I don't want to be taking them week 18 anyway. Uh, and really, week 18 doesn't even matter. Uh, the other week we should look at is week two because there's there's bigger favorites in week two, um, a lot bigger. We can talk about the Rams a little bit. Rams, uh, Rams is going to be an interesting one because really this year when I color coded this, Eric, it's there's not a lot of teams that are. There's only a couple spreads that are like over 13 for the entire season, and there's not a lot really over t- over 10. I think it's like eh, maybe like. 30 but you know that's all like the same you know the same few teams um it's like six teams combined for like you know 20 something you know, 11 point favorites so you're going to be taken as the spreads are right now you, you got to get through this thing to get through a lot of six point favorites that, that that's what that that's what it's going to require this year so there's going to be it should be a nice really steady bleed this year of, I, think, I think i think denver is going to be real chalky this week um in week one no, week two. Week two. Uh, don't, don't they, aren't, they, aren't they 10 points over? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. And they got, I'm just looking at sorted by weeks. Yeah, that's that's their best game all season. Their next yeah. best one is week seven, uh, playing the Jets at eight and a half. And, and that's a tough one. That, that's, that's one where even though a lot of people are going to be on them because of how tough their schedule is and how tough their division is, I'm either going to take none of them or all of them. Okay. Um, I, I learned this uh, from my partner who does – who he, he's not a wreck in DFS, but he's not a, a huge skill pl- uh, advantage player, but he understands ownership uh, strategies. And he, he, he's taught me over the last few years, and some of these, you know, you just, you just, ta- you just take them. Oh, he's, he's, one one everyone's those, he's one of those guys that says, I'm either going full in or full fade. I don't, I'm not going for 20 – 20% on, on a correct. Team that I want to be on yeah. Okay. And I think, and I think Denver is a really good example in week two. You should be on, you should be slam dunking all in on Denver, which is probably what I think will, what we'll end up doing. Cause I'm just not going to, I'm not going to want to split with the Rams. I, I would rather hope um, Rams have a couple extra better plays and I'm just going to hope that the Rams are better than what they're supposed to be in this particular instance. I'm not counting on, I'm just going to hope because if they are better than what they are, that they're supposed to be there's a few games where they could be maybe seven eight point favorites instead of fours and fives um where denver just doesn't have that many of those scenarios in, in my opinion so i'm probably gonna, i'm probably going to go all in or mostly probably all in on denver uh week week two and you know you lose you lose but i'm just not going to want to take green bay are you are you are you, are you, re- are you registering yourself or are you having your partner go out to vegas to do it for you um, I have another another friend who lives okay. in Nevada uh, okay. that, that we'll register that together, and he and he, uh, he submits the picks uh, for. I okay. give him a free roll. He yeah, I'm actually going to go out. I'm actually going to go out to register myself. So I was wondering when you were going to be out there. I'm probably going to be out in August, August, August for a couple of days. I'm probably going to do it now. Oh, well, maybe we can meet up August batch the party for me. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to buy him. All right. Well, listen, uh, you, you guys will hear from us uh, in, in the in future. You know, well, again, these, this is going to be probably the sum of the total amount of videos we're going to do as far as time goes. throughout the, rest of the season. Um, But uh, we'll, we'll probably keep them to like 20, 30 minutes at the most um, during the season. But uh, once again, this is uh, this is this is pretty high level stuff. But you know what? There's a lot of money to be made in this stuff. And there's, there's quite a bit of edge. So uh, we're going to, and I think, and I think it's, I think it's fun too, Eric. Well, I mean, I do it. You know, I wouldn't do it if it was free, but yeah, I've got some available time throughout the day in between my things. And like, yeah. you, like you alluded to earlier, it's, it's a puzzle. It's, yeah. it's good. It's good for your brain. It's, it, it it's a fun exercise. Yeah. Um, last year I, I took the exercise off by going for yeah. week one, but I I'm, I'm excited for the exercise as long as I get to play it this year. Yeah. And when it's over, it's, and, and when it's over, it's over. It's, it's a long, exhausting season. Um, but I, you know, only one person wins some of these things and you have to find enjoyment in the process. Yeah. Otherwise you're just going to be miserable playing these things. So I think it's important yeah. to tell everyone, you know, have fun with it. Don't, don't yeah. play for too much money because in the end you're down, you, you know, if the other guy doesn't want to chop with you, it might be 25,000 or nothing, um, at right. the end. And that's just how these things play out, but yeah. you know, play it cause you enjoy it too. It's, 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 it's a fun process. All right, for Brave Jayhawk, this is Sheets, and uh, you will hear from us in the future. Good luck. Stop recording.